Welcome to another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Podcast. This week we are discussing truck driver behavior and consistency and how it impacts you fleets, fleet owners. All right, we have on the show this week Roger Longbotham and Ward Workington of Fleet Metrica. We're talking about the study that uh, they had done. They commissioned University of British Columbia to do a study, and they used a lot of telemet- telemetrics data in the study, and we're talking about the revelations that come out of the study. And stick around to the end of the podcast where I share with you how you can get a copy of the white paper where Roger and Ward have really cut down on the whole study and just give you the highlights in a short white paper. So stick around to the end for that. Let's get on with the episode. Roger, Ward, welcome, welcome, welcome. Roger, can you do a brief introduction of yourself? Sure. Yes, I um, have a PhD in statistics and have been working as a data scientist for many years, um, Amazon and Microsoft, and now I am have a consulting, small consulting business in uh, statistics and data science. And we got to get into statistics because this is going to be kind of neat. Ward, Mr. Ward, can you throw a little introduction in? Yes, certainly. Hi, I'm uh, Ward Workington. Um, I am the owner of Fleet Metrica. We're a data analytics company for the transportation market. So um, I'm also coming from that perspective as well. Well, and, and for John and I and the audience, hang in there because this is going to be a really interesting show. We're not going to be talking a lot about data and analytics and stuff, but we do. We've got a really um, interesting topic, and part of it starts with consistency. Can Who would like to address this one, Roger or Ward? What is driving consistency? What does driving consistency mean, and how is that measured? Roger, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so um, in in a non-technical sense, consistency means when someone is outside of inconsistency is when someone's outside of their normal operating range. So, um, I don't know, I've been skiing a bit with my grandchildren lately and I got to thinking about you know how important it is to to ski within your whatever limits are that you have for yourself you know if you're a beginner then you've got certain limits if you're more advanced then of course your limits are different and if you go outside those limits especially in the upper end you know you you can get into trouble and even have an accident um so I, that's the way I think of it for for driving consistency is we all have, I guess, different abilities as drivers, but when we get outside of those, you know, our comfort zone, if you will, mm-hmm. then that's when you're likely to have an accident. And that's what our study uh, showed is that those inconsistencies or when you get outside of the, that zone where you're consistent, is when you're more likely to have an accident. Ooh, that's cool. War. Roger just mentioned a study. Do you want to introduce the study a little bit? Yeah, so Roger referring to the study at the UBC, University of British Columbia, where um, we, uh, uh, with involvement of uh, some of our customers, uh, we were able to um, analyze data, telematics data, to, to understand what impact it has on, on accidents. And uh, this is actually this is actually the third study we've done with uh, UBC and we really got some results from this latest study and and, and the main results were that uh, inconsistency is a key factor in predicting the risk of accidents and and so that's uh, what we're referring to here. All right, you got to repeat that. The key result or the key study finding was? That inconsistent driving behavior is a key factor in predicting the risk of accidents. And it included factors uh, such as, well, actually, um, uh, speeding, harsh braking, and even inconsistency in fuel efficiency had uh, 
had detected that drivers are at a higher risk of getting in an accident. Mm. So this has got nothing to do with, uh, say, a, a roadside violation. This is all data captured through telematics. Yeah, absolutely. Right, this is right. proactive. Go ahead, yeah, Roger. Cool. Right, and and in, we we also found that uh, speeding in and of itself was a predictor of mm -hmm. uh, or increased likelihood of accidents. But um, that that's well known. The the main new finding is yeah. that uh, inconsistency in oh. speeding, harsh braking, fuel efficiency are all additional and new predictors of of a probability of accidents. Right. So, so we've always known for a long time that speeding is a cause of crashes and whatnot. This is now putting meaning behind it to be able to say we can actually put some numbers to it to predict when that speeding is going to cause us some trouble. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so the study did that. It, it actually quantified that relationship between speeding uh, and accidents, as well as inconsistency in speeding, harsh braking, and and um, fuel efficiency. So, how cool. each of those, how much each of those contributed to an increased probability of an accident? Yeah, wow. and you know, in previous studies that we had done with UBC, we actually looked specifically at speeding and invalidated results that uh, had been already uh, shown, which is higher. Uh, higher or elevated levels of, of speeding um, are at a higher risk. So it, it just validated yep. what, what was uh, sh uh, already shown in the market in the past. Right. Cool. Now, if I'm a speeder, just I'm gonna, I just want a little clarification on consistency or inconsistency. If I'm constantly a speeder, I'm being very consistent in one definition. Right. So, yes, uh, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not saying that constant speeders are are safer drivers than uh, <laughs> those speed, those ones who only speed every now and again. Right. Exactly. Go ahead, Roger. Um, well, yes. Well, so what we're saying is the speeding in and of itself is uh, increasing your likelihood of an accident. But if you are speeding more than usual, or if you're somebody who doesn't normally speed, you know, maybe you're, you know, an 85 year old grandmother or something. And, and now, and now you're, you're, you're speeding. Well, that, that increases the likelihood of an accident quite a bit. Right. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Right. So inconsistency is the main finding. The new finding, right? Okay. Yes. And Ward for you, how did the study come about? Well, you know, customers um, came to us and said, hey, are we, are we measuring the right things? Are we looking at things that um, really relate to risk and accidents? And, and, and so this uh, naturally led us to uh, understanding what we were measuring and, and drawing on the resources of the universities um, to, to help us make more sense of this data in, in a more substantial way. So it's kind of new measurements. Johnny, you, you had a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, so, so now we can actually get some tangible results. So how can, how can these benefit the fleets then, these results that we're going to get? What, what can we utilize these results with? Well, I'd like to jump in with that uh, response uh, and then let Roger uh, jump in there. But I, one of the big things about consistency is, is now we can give feedback to everyone in the fleet before they become a high-risk driver. You know, why wait to, you know, to, to have a driver that gets in an accident? We may have to actually dismiss that driver um, or, or it may result in, you know, something worse. And so there's an opportunity now to monitor the consistency of drivers at whatever performance or level they're at. And this, uh, the benefit is now, hey, why do I have to wait? For someone to call me and tell me I'm doing something wrong, I could monitor my own performance and be safer. Mm -hmm. Roger, did you have a comment? No, I mean that's that's exactly right. The uh, the the whole purpose of this study, well, first of all, was to determine the relationships 
And if there is a relationship and, and we found there was, which uh, it, it truthfully kind of surprised me. Um, I mean, I, Ward had an intuition about it and thought, yeah, this would be a good thing to look at. And I didn't know, <laughs> you know, so we, we included it. You know, that's what we do. Is we, uh, we try the variables that are available to us, the data we have. And, and um, sometimes we have to interpret that, not interpret, but um, use that data in different ways um, in, to find the relationship that's important. And, and Ward had this idea, which is great and, and worked out really yeah. well. But um, the purpose of how this can be used, I think Ward said, is, is uh, monitoring, either self-monitoring or by management of the fleets to uh, make sure that their drivers are being safe. And you know, I guess also an insurance company could use it to, uh, if that data were shared with them, of course, yep. to um, to help monitor and, and maybe even reduce uh, insurance rates. Uh, Roger, I want to I want to jump in there on a comment about my intuition. It was more than my intuition. Uh, this okay. approach to monitoring processes has been around for forty well for many years. Um, I, w I was actually first introduced to it. Uh, working at Ford Motor Company, and you know the the, the 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 whole North American automobile industry changed their whole mindset around consistency. It was no longer we're making parts to meet the the the, the, uh, the engineering specification what the engineers require. It was now we're going to give the operator a tool to monitor their performance and to be as consistent as they can be. And you know, I was blown away when I saw. Uh, that in action and, and in fact there's a study it's a well-known st another study um that you can google uh called the uh, uh, ford transmissions quality study and the video actually talks about this change in mindset and the importance of moving away from just meeting parts to spec to being consistent and uh so you know i, I can't take the credit uh roger for <laughs> from my intuitive of this there it, it it it's it's uh it's enabled the automotive industry to compete globally and and i think that it has a, a real uh potential for the trucking industry to embrace this methodology to significantly reduce the risk of accidents and sure. uh and, and it even better now that we have you know, the ELDs coming into play here, where all this data is being collected, it doesn't take that much more work to automate the analysis to, to, to monitor for consistency. Let me sure. ask my co-host, my co-host <laughs> a question. This guy over here. <laughs> all right, so Johnny, you got all this yep. telematics data coming in, uh, but yep. the company don't do nothing with it. Mm. How does the insurance industry look at that? Oh, yeah, with a big frown, really quickly, big frown. Uh, mm. I think I think insurance companies would just be in awe of what's going on here with this study and the information that can be gleaned from it. The new challenge is going to be how do I get that motor carrier on board to get monitoring this information, do something with this information, act on this information. So, so that becomes the next challenge of – well, how, how do we get motor carriers to utilize this data and do something with it? Well, yeah. that's probably a good question for Ward. How do motor carriers, how can they capture it, analyze it, and then use it? Yeah. yeah. Well, the data has already been captured automatically with the ELDs. And, uh, but as as John was saying, uh, you know, how many are, are really looking at it and utilizing it to the extent they could. But I'm glad you're bringing up the question about the, or bringing up the discussion around insurance, because I think that there is as much benefit, if not more benefit, to the insurance folks than there is to the fleets. And we could probably have a separate interview just on that. But what it does is it opens up the door to uh, behavior-based mon monitoring in, in a significant way. And, right. and uh, it, it, a couple other things is it doesn't matter what kind of telematics devices you have in your, in your fleet. You're looking at consistency, whatever that, wherever that data is coming from. Right. And yep. you're not necessarily needing to have a benchmark uh, across the board. You're looking at 
what that fleet does today and whether their behavior is consistent or not. So it, it uh, right. the, the, the um, so really coming back to your question, what does it take or what can it take to get fleets on board? Well, if you get um, insurers recognizing the value of this, then, you know, they go in and they raid a fleet. They want to make sure that that fleet does not turn around and become unsafe. And this is a tool mm -hmm. that ensures that, uh, that um, fleets aren't going in the wrong direction, and 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 it, it and it has t benefit to the insurer. I mean, it's it's protecting the margins, and for a fleet, it's it's hopefully uh, not seeing as great an increase as their neighbor are getting for yeah. insurance because yeah. we all know well, it's still you, going up. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got lots of regulations that are out there. So, taking ELDs as an example was imposed on us um, yeah. by the U.S. back in 2018, and now we got Canadian coming into place with electronic logging devices as well. So, there's no reason why an insurance company can't impose on a motor carrier to say, "Hey, you want insurance through us? You need to be managing this data. You need to show us that you have consistency and." within your fleet. And I like the fact that what you said, we don't have to necessarily measure against our peers. We measure against what's going on within the fleet. How can we manage that and bring that down? Then maybe after a while, the insurance provider could start measuring one fleet against another against another and find out, wow, these guys are performing better. Let's find out what it is they're doing so we can share that information with these other carriers to help them raise the bar. Uh, good point, Johnny. Roger, the, when we're talking about consistency, are we talking about the fleet or are we talking about the individual driver? Uh, we're talking about the individual driver. Mm -hmm. All right, so right. a scorecard type uh, instrument. Yes. Yes. So how is that driver uh, doing versus his or her uh, historical driving record not not in terms of accidents or anything like that but just in terms of you know how fast they drive and how much harsh braking they do etc that's cool ward of course fleet metrica what what how can fleets put this into practice let's say yeah. it that way yeah and I just want to build on the response that Roger just gave. You know, consistency isn't just the responsibility of the driver. You see it at the driver level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like billing errors. You get billing errors in trucking companies, but they, they may occur when someone's rating the load or 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 or, or uh, the driver's putting in their, their reports. Consistency, um, a, a driver being able to maintain consistency may have more to do with how they're trained and how they're coached. Um, or it may have more to do with um, the equipment that's being purchased or maintained or um, just the hiring. I mean, there, 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 there are a lot of influences beyond the driver that are important. And so you need to take care in how you, you're, you're acting on this information. And so what Fleet Metrica does is it makes sense of all that data for you. So the drivers, anyone can see what uh, – what, uh, what their responsibility is in this process in terms of taking action it, it, at a driver level, at a driver supervisor level, even a terminal or owner level. Everyone has responsibility for what happens uh, in terms of over road performance. And we just make it easy for uh, people to make sense of that data. And of course, uh, we, we monitor high risk drivers, but we also monitor the consistency of drivers. So that's already built into our, our, our uh, methodology. So we've, we've already... Um, have uh, automated that for fleets. Yeah, I, I can see where this is a great opportunity for for those that are not measuring consistency, uh, not utilizing this data, and, and a lot of them going. I, I don't know why I'm having crashes. I don't know why these guys are crashing all the time. I don't know what's going on. But we start utilizing this data. Now we can implement corrective actions where we have data that points us in the right direction. Now where well we can develop training to prevent these and, and correct these behaviors and, and move on beyond these. So, hey, we don't have these type of crashes anymore because we've recognized what the common denominators are and we just don't have them anymore. We've corrected them. Great. Bonus. Move yeah. on. Next one. You know, so I think this is great to be able to utilize this information. So now management, operations, staff, safety, maintenance, everybody gets involved with how everybody performs. 
Yeah, and, and it's important to highlight, I think, what Ward said. It's not necessarily the, the driver that's inconsistent. Right. It could yep. be influenced by dispatch, customer demands, mm-hmm. all kinds of other stuff um, sure. that are in there. So uh, when it, you develop the training, it may not yep. be driver training. It may yep. be an influencer training. Sure. Sure. Well, and, and you could have new drivers right. coming on board this company, and it's like, I've never hauled this kind of freight before. I've never pulled this type of trailer before. So now, all of a sudden, my consistencies start to become inconsistent with how I'm performing with this type of equipment. You know, right. Um, right. like you said, the it, runs, the travel lanes, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, Roger. you're right. It's it, it's not just if I could jump in. Uh, it's not just the level. Uh, and who's accountable at different levels, but different areas of the business and di- different yeah. uh, fleet um, uh, divisions that uh, that are are generating different uh, results over the road that are uh, important to monitor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Roger, I think you had a comment. Well, I was, I was just going to uh, affirm what, what you were saying a little bit earlier. In the, uh, you know, this could be scheduling. You know, if a driver is scheduled to deliver more than usual and has to go faster than usual or take, you know, corners faster or, or something, then, you know, that could be causing accidents. And it, and you can mm-hmm. we don't we don't see that in the data. What we see right. is the driving inconsistency, but we don't know what's what's driving that, if you yeah. will. So there's there's. You know, some of the things that the the data can tell us is very powerful, but there's a lot that's not in there as well. So we have to recognize the strengths and the weaknesses of of what the data is telling us. Well, but but at the same time, having that data, though, helps us to start looking at other areas to find out. Do the investigation portion, right? The data that's not being exposed gives us now the opportunity to go, okay, we have the smoking gun. We need to figure out how the trigger got pulled, right? So yeah, yeah. so that approach yeah. can be applied there. So we dig back. So like you say, maybe it's a scheduling issue. Okay, well, let's start talking with everybody about how the scheduling is. And Because I, I yeah. actually had a situation arise with a customer not long ago where they were having a driver that was complaining about the scheduling. And, and it was funny because it had nothing to do with the way the operations had set up the scheduling process. Everything should work bang, bang, bang. The problem was maintenance. <laughs> Because mm. every day, every time he come in to get his truck, it was tied up in the maintenance bay, getting getting an inspection or service work or a tire change, stuff that the other driver that used it before had found, but they weren't getting completed in a timely uh, timely manner. So now this driver is starting behind the eight ball right off the bat, and he's rush, 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 rush. And, and it was causing, he'd have some violations. It was showing up as speeding violations on his data. Uh, and one resulted in a small minor crash. And he was under pressure to perform because of maintenance and their screw up and not telling hmm. operations who could have taken and said, okay, well, hang on, we can push out these timelines so you don't have to rush to get there. But there was no communication. So. Hmm. And I like the discussion around actions, John, because unless someone's actually taking actions, the situation doesn't yeah. change. And no, exactly. And and if 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 you are able to make it easy enough to make sense of all this data, you're not wasting your time mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. playing with data. You're you you you're, you're yeah. more value added at retraining drivers or finding yeah. out what's going on in that operations or maintenance area that yeah. that's contributing to these issues. Yeah. Well, you know, and unfortunately, you know, been in the trucking industry long enough, you, you you hear the stories from drivers and a lot of people dismiss it as, ah, he's whining, he's complaining, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, if I had that to back it up, I'd be going, hang on, there's some legitimacy to his complaint. And now we've got some data to back it up and now we can go backwards to figure out how to correct it. Exactly. Roger? Right. Yeah, you know, um, these studies are, are great in terms of what they can tell us, but they always raise numerous questions that we want to say, oh, I wish I had the data to answer this question or that question. Yeah. You know, just, exactly. just the kind of thing you were, you were mentioning. And yep. so I, I think Ward's got another study in mind for uh, what sometime this year. But, you know, there are additional questions that always come up and you say, I wish I had more data or I wish I had looked at something differently or a different company. And, you know, just... Always, always more things to do and, and more that we can find out. Yeah, I mean, we'd like to 
learn about the other metrics, we, we, um, one of the challenges we find is we didn't have enough telematics data to really determine whether it had an impact on accidents. And as we collect more data over time, we're able to an analyze more of those metrics. And now that we're coming up with things like distraction events, where you know, we're only seeing in, in, in cab videos more recently, we don't, we don't have mm -hmm. enough data to, to uh, build models or test it around right. that. Um, another area that uh, we'd like to study is is actually tying this closer to loss ratios and bringing that data in so that, you know, as an insurer, you can tie that risk to a bottom line. Yep. That's interesting. Sure. Now, Ward, you've got a white paper. Is that the right word for it? That would be available that uh, for people who want to know more. Um, yeah, so we um, there's a, a white paper on on just scorecards themselves. What's involved in uh, best practices in implementing scorecards, and obviously monitoring um, as it relates to this study, um, Chris. The, the important um, tips from that white paper are it's it's important to provide feedback to to all of your drivers, not just those drivers that are high risk. Give everyone the opportunity to provide feedback and and to provide uh, actionable information, not just, hey, here's, here's how I'm doing, but uh, you know, look out for this or congratulations on that. And so those are some examples of tips that are, that are in that white paper. Right, and of course, that's on your website, right? And- uh, Yes, it is. Yeah, and we're gonna put a link in the show notes below so that anybody who wants a copy of that can uh, get it easily, right? Great. Roger, thanks so much for coming on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. My pleasure. <laughs> hey, Ward, I, my I friend. Just want, yep. I just want to add one more comment here for, for the viewers to realize most people think dataticians, statisticians are boring people. And I just want them to realize Roger's not that because if you'd been paying attention, there was some data provided during this meeting. This man goes skiing with his grandchildren. That's not boring. <laughs> <laughs> that's dangerous <laughs> did you do yeah. a study on that before you got into it make sure the left ski and right ski were in the right position I didn't have enough data for that sorry okay well sometimes you just gotta test it to see what happens right, <laughs> that's right. Beautiful. Ward awesome. thanks for coming on Fleet thank you Metrica. appreciate it and what a great interview. Thanks, uh, Roger. Thanks, Ward of Fleet Metrica. If you would like to get a copy of this white paper, let me just show it to you here. If you would like to get your own copy of the white paper, uh, click on the link in the show notes down below and Ward will be happy to send it to you. He's done a great job in really reducing the content of this study to a few short pages. I really know you're going to enjoy it. So click on the link down below. And thanks again, Roger and Ward. Trip, a uh, trucking risk and insurance podcast. And we are your hosts, John Farquhar and myself, Mr. Harris. All right, and for this week, we are out of here.